in professional freeride skiing. Athletes put their bodies under incredible forces. The rewards for success can be great. So can the risks. This is how one athlete prepares for competition. We're at the Imperial College Boathouse Gym in Putney with Sam to follow up on our first day in Harley Street. We've uh, fine-tuned his flexibility work. He's got some great gains in ankle flex and hip range already. And uh, we, we're looking to get to the point where we can develop his power. Some of the connective tissue operates like plastic where with tension over time, there's a slow deformation. It's pretty hard to do on your own, so this just accelerates it. Medieval is definitely a good description for what's going on right now, but no, whatever we can do to get this hip working better. Well, if, if my hips are turned on better, uh, I'll be able to utilize the full amount of power I have in my muscles, not just a limited amount. So we sort of have the, the power, we have the power, Captain, but we need to uh, unlock its full potential. So that's what we're trying to do. So we get, uh, we get into dynamic stretching because we're more closely replicating what the muscle's actually going to do when it's performing. Ah, is that? <laughs> oh. This is also that Close it. <laughs> Depending on how skillfully you, you organise the stretch, you can engage it in, in three dimensions. So a sagittal plane, a frontal plane and a transverse plane. Which, uh, which really helps the muscle length get to what it's designed to do. So we're taking Sam's posterior chain stretching from more static to a dynamic. Now, firstly in the sagittal plane and then you'll see shortly his frontal. And that helps that contractile element just get longer and stay longer. Sagittal is like in that plane and everything. Yeah. Frontal, we're here. And transverse is all rotary. Mm -hmm. And muscles love being stretched in all three, not just one plane, which traditional stretching seems to focus on. So, well, where is this going? In? <laughs> um, we're going to play around designing a, a circuit that Sam can do that can develop his his uh, 90 second power endurance. Most of his runs are about 90 seconds max. Uh, so we're going to use a combination of some kettlebell lifts, some Turkish get ups some um, power bag stuff with lunging that all try and challenge his center of gravity or work on his hip range of motion or gets him firing the hips in awkward positions which is how he develops himself as a skier. Okay, you get it. I'm in a bit of pain right now. Uh, it's not, uh, not unexpected but it's been really good. Uh, I've discovered a lot more about my body and what its weaknesses and strengths are. We've definitely helped his flexibility, which I think is a key issue for him, and identified through a screening process that he's a very balanced athlete, and we perhaps found some stuff on his left hip which can just help him develop his, his power. We built a circuit for him that he can take anywhere and do anywhere. It's been a really eye-opening three days, and uh, I think I've got a lot out of it, and I can't wait to put it into practice. My summary is that um, he's got all the tools now and he's got six to eight weeks to to build himself into the best possible athlete he's been in his whole life and he's in the best shape that he could ever be in going into that six to eight weeks and we look forward to seeing him nail it he's gonna win of course he's gonna win <laughs>